Smart Mountain is not a 4,000 footer, but it feels like it when you climb it. The mountain is a prominent flat top dome. The great bulk dominates the countryside for miles around. Although the summit is gently covered with trees, it has a tall fire tower and the approach via the Lambert Ridge Trail is part of the Appalachian Trail marked by white blazes. Located at the western edge of New Hampshire, Smarts Mountain is the southernmost mountain in New Hampshire on the Appalachian Trail. For hikers trekking on the Appalachian Trail, it is the first peak encountered in the state and it will be the last fire tower on the trail. For day hikers, it's a perfect day hike. Not too strenuous, but not too easy. Not many people. My Sandy woke at 5.30 a.m., pushed me out of bed, handed me a large travel mug of hot coffee with an English muffin, and sent me on away with a big hug. I was feeling pretty good, dressed in my summer hiking garb, somewhat tattered polypropylene top and bottom, with my old worn out cotton shorts to my tiny yellow car. It was clear that the weather forecasters were right this time. It was raining. Everything was soaking wet. As my car accelerated briskly up the exit ramp leading north off through the highway, a short bright segment of a rainbow showed itself in front of some deep space clouds. This reinforced my feeling of optimism. Not much traffic, a little mist fogged up the windshield. I switched the wipers on periodically. Soon cruising along comfortably at 70 miles an hour. I slowed down to maneuver the exit onto Route 89 North. The air got even thicker. The road was completely deserted, quiet and smooth. I tuned into the local public radio station for some bright classical music. Deep green grass and trees lined both sides of the highway in an infinitely long, unbroken strip. Also a patch of white daisies decorated the roadside. No hint of civilization. No houses, no signs, no buildings of any type on either side of the highway for a long way. It was a beautiful feeling. At last, civilization and the Hanover exit. In Lyme, New Hampshire, I wondered which way to the trailhead. I drove slowly through a pretty Vermont-style 18th century town common and the country store, a village green, a tall Civil War soldier in granite standing guard atop a granite block, a pair of small American flags crossed below his feet, a mature crab tree decorated the village church lawn, a robin pranced in the lush grass beneath its branches. The dark green shutters against the white siding of a country inn invited guests inside. A few white Adirondack trash were scattered in a very small, neatly trimmed front lawn by lovely flower beds. There were only a couple of miles to go to reach the trailhead. The road was narrow. A swollen brook seems to crisscross under the road. A few older homes were scattered, mostly passing only green foliage. A sign, Appalachian Trail, with the familiar pair of hiker silhouettes sat at the edge of the roadway. I took a left there onto a well-graded gravel road, signed Dorchester Road. Now I spotted the trailhead parking area. The parking lot was covered by several large puddles from the overnight rain, with room for a dozen cars. It was completely empty. The trailhead sign read Lambert Ridge. T blaze faced me only inches above the trail sign. The open woods trail marked by a dark brown wet strip on the forest floor led gradually upwards. Five seconds after opening the car door, a buzzing cloud around my head. I dove for my 100% deep. I started marching enthusiastically up the trail. I was excited and pushed myself through the mixed forest of mature trees.
the Lambert Ridge Trail gets you climbing right from the start with numerous ledge abysses en route to the top by a series of open ledges. The upper half takes you up a long section of bedrock spine. A thick layer of deer moss carpeted the face of the ledge. The ground was damp from the overnight rain. Indian root with a star-shaped white flower. A tight grouping of several white trilliums. Later, yellow tiger lily. Another view of my summer gold directly ahead. The fire tower protruded boldly, well above the treetops, off-center from the flat top. A long ledge stretched out ahead of me. A single jonco pranced along the inclined granite ledge. Ominous clouds now obscure the summit. Heavy with dampness, cool winds swirled. A bubble of fog blew by my face as if a fog machine had exploded silently in front of me. I decided to charge forward in an attempt to reach the summit before the weather turned bad. Soon, the trail re-entered the shelter of the woods and I dropped down on the other side of the ridge. I moved ahead quickly on the long level section of the trail. The forest floor was covered by moss and ferns on each side of the easy to follow trail. A jay called loudly. It was obvious that the trail would pitch up very steeply. But when? I proceeded with mixed emotions anticipating the final push straight up to the fire tower and the summit. It was quiet, sheltered from the wind off the ridge, past a peaceful small stream only a couple of feet wide, splashing water around rock steps, a few rotted truncheons cutting over a wet area. Each friendly AT blaze reminded me of how many other hikers have passed this spot in past years. The final ascent of Smots Mountain presents a rocky and relatively steep stint. The summit is below tree line, so you'll have to climb the fire tower to reap the rewards of a fine view. The fire tower rises above the trees, providing one of the best panoramas anywhere in New Hampshire. The 360 degree view includes the main spine of the White Mountain to the east and the Green Mountain to the west. With its open ledges on Lambert Ridge and old fire tower on the summit, Smarts affords plenty of exceptional views offered for a modest effort. Although of only moderate elevation, Smarts Mountain offers a taste of boreal forest cloaking its upper ridges. Suddenly I stopped when I noticed my heart was beating unexpectedly hard. I had been charging forward for a good clip and I hadn't noticed that the trail had pitched up as expected. It was this section that I had been looking for. A wet log ladder lay on the steep ground. The trail was badly eroded here in some places, cutting through relatively open white birch and spruce. I was still making good progress as a white bird sparrow called repeatedly. Surprisingly, I almost walked by the 30-foot long fur trail without noticing the fire tower hidden there by the fog. A maze of fur trails radiated from the 30-foot diameter rock dome on which the tower was centered. Spruce trees crowded the clearing. One of the concrete bases hand-lettered 1939. Each boot produced a sharp, loud, vibrating sound 
when it tapped each wooden plank of this sturdy, unusually tall, well-maintained fire tower. Two much appreciated handrails were the only safety feature, however, and I used my two hands to pull myself up. I paused at the first landing, already above the tree level. My hands were already grasping the rails firmly. Another pause at the second landing, up further to the third landing. Then the fourth platform. The tower felt really tall and my grip on the rails tightened with each step. My muscles were tight. I was relieved when the trap door of the lookout didn't open with a solid push. I thought, who would help me down if I froze in fear? Thankfully, I made it down from the tower. Three hours to get up to the summit was not record time, but I was happy. My plan was to trot down again without a break. The wet trail splashed with each quick step, my walking stick flashing wildly. I checked off each now familiar landmark in my mind as I sped past without stopping. It was like fast rewinding a movie. A bashful breeze appeared momentarily, then faded. The sound of the river below grew louder. Back at the car, in 90 seconds I had pulled off my boots and multiple socks, which were amazingly dry, and had slipped into my dock sides. I was on my way home. I flipped on the windshield wipers as it started to rain within a few miles. 